Today is June 12th, and we're visiting an early planted field of soybeans in central North Carolina in a region where the early soybean production system as we know it in the southern U.S. has not been widely adopted. The early soybean production system in the southern U.S. is really defined as planting indeterminate varieties of soybeans in April compared to a more traditional system of planting maturity group 5 and later soybeans in May or June. You may be asking what is all the hype about early planted soybeans and the most simple answer I can give you is increased yield. If you examine internal pioneer data over the course of 10 or more years uh, utilizing hundreds of thousands of lines of data, you can easily see that the trend in yield is downward as planting date is delayed. Now granted, that advantage to early planting differs depending on where you are in the United States and the advantage is greater in some of those regions compared to others. But the general trend is pretty clear, increased yields with earlier planting. To fully exploit the benefits of the early soybean production system, one must have a clear understanding of the maturity group by planting date interactions and relationships that exist for their specific latitude. You may be asking yourself, well, just how does a, an April 15th planted soybean, for example, consistently out yield a May 15th planted soybean? The simple answer, or the best answer that I can give you, is that the April planted bean will typically set more pods than the May planted bean. We can best begin to explain how an April 15th planted soybean sets more pods than a May 15th planted soybean by utilizing two plants selected from this early April planted soybean field in North Carolina. Note that these soybean plants are roughly about 18 inches tall and have about 10 main stem nodes, including the unifoliate scars. Also note that many of the lower main stem nodes are only about an inch, inch and a half in length. Uh, that inner node length increases as you move up to the plant but by the time you get to nodes eight or nine, they may be two inches long. But regardless, those nodes and that node length is shorter in early planted beans than later planted beans. The result is uh, less lodging in general and shorter plants, especially when you plant prior to about April 23rd. So you could, in essence, view early planting as a lodging mitigation tool in many many regions of the country. Early planted soybeans tend to set more pods at the lower main stem node positions than may planted beans. In may planted or later planted beans, oftentimes the rapid vegetative growth results in shading to the lower nodes and often you will not set pods until you get four or more nodes up the plant. Here you have not only the, the likelihood that pods will be set at one position above the unifoliate scar, you have a, a reproductive branch there that means that 8, 10, maybe even more than 12 pods could be set as, as low as one node above the unifoliate scars. That is, um, that is true for both of these plants. And if you look at the plant on the right uh, and the, the branch that is two positions above the unifoliate node, you can already see uh, bloom tags have fallen off of one, two, three um, blooms here, which indicates that you may have as many as three or four beans set at this first position on this lateral branch. Here's two more pods, three more pods per possible. Here's two more here, and you still have nodes being added to that lateral branch. So it's very possible that you could have more than 10 individual beans um, at that one fruiting position that's as low as two nodes above the unifoliate scar. 
Uh, it's important to note that this degree of lateral branching does not always occur with early planted soybeans, but tends to be more common and may partially explain why more pods are set in early planted beans. Please keep in mind that we're only at June 12th and these plants still have about 10 more made stem nodes that they will likely uh, acquire uh, before reaching their full uh, vegetative size. Uh, it's important to note that we are nine days away from the longest day of the year or the summer solstice and we are already setting pods uh, in many positions on this plant. So if you think about utilizing sunlight as an input or a resource, uh, nine days from now you're going to have the most sunlight at this latitude that you're going to have all summer and you're gonna be able to utilize that light to uh, produce uh, photosynthesis for this plant, produce more carbohydrates, more nitrogen uh, to build in that plant, and the result of those increased carbohydrates and increased nitrogen is gonna be an increased pod set. So for early planted beans, the, the time at which they reach reproductive growth uh, and the critical pod set stage relative to maximum light harvest is very important. For example, if you had a May planted soybean in this situation, you would be pre-flower, you would be growing three inch internodes instead of one and a half to two inch internodes, and you would be utilizing maximum light uh, close to that summer solstice to generate vegetative growth rather than reproductive growth. Early planting allows you to maximize that light harvest to drive reproductive growth and pod set rather than producing the vegetative part of the plant. Please keep in mind that the early soybean production system has not been fully defined in all regions of the country. So if you're considering trying this system, you need to understand that like any other system, it is not without limitations. For example, the early soybean production system in the Southern United States results in harvest that occurs in primarily the month of September when conditions are extremely hot and seed that receive extended periods of rainfall will deteriorate very rapidly. Now, in the upper Midwest, this may not be an issue, but in the southern United States, it is a real consideration that must be considered if you want to plant utilizing the early soybean production system. Another real issue with the early soybean production system in the southern U.S. is weed resurgence following harvest. If you're harvesting in September, even early October, uh, the likelihood of annual grasses and troublesome weeds like Palmer amaranth resurging after that harvest is very real. So you have to build into your cost strategy a method uh, for post-harvest weed control. Perhaps one of the largest drawbacks of the early soybean production system nationwide would be conflicts with corn harvest. So if you are not prepared to harvest corn and soybeans at the same time and you don't have the grain handling capacity and harvest capacity and hauling capacity to manage that, then be very careful with wide scale adoption of this system. Also keep in mind that this system may not work everywhere. One perfect example uh, can be described in the state of North Carolina. If you were to take this system east into the coastal plains uh, that tend to be very droughty uh, during critical grain fill periods and you end up setting a large load of pods with early planting and then run out of moisture on a very droughty soil during pod fill the result will be very small seed or BBs or even wafers uh, that are essentially non-harvestable. Thanks again for joining me and we will try our best to stop back by this site intermittently through the, through the summer and into the fall and let you know how things turn out at this early planted 
soybean site in central North Carolina. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.